What is up everybody? Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are doing great. Today I want to talk to you about my first two weeks with the new MacBook Pro 16 inch M1 and is, is it still worth it? Do, do I still think it's worth it in in the space of um, still having my gaming laptop which I'm trying to sell as opposed to this as my main workstation. Long story short, it's amazing. I will probably never go back to working on a gaming laptop after having this. And I hope this one lasts me quite a long time because it was quite expensive. Even though it's only the base model 16 inch M1 MacBook Pro, the only thing I upgraded was I made it one terabyte storage instead of 512. And that just gave me a lot more work room for software and like assets and stuff to keep it on the drive. So that I don't have to always have an external connected for general work stuff. Before we get started, please do me a favor, go down to the like button, click it, show it who's boss, and then drop a comment down below uh, before we get started. Just let me know if you've got one of these, do you have tips for me, do you have advice, and then listen through and then see if it still matches at the end of it. It's just things that I experienced myself, reasons of why I swapped, and then comparing it to my gaming laptop, which is like amazing fast. So if you're working on a gaming laptop and you're thinking about upgrading, this is a good video for you because that's where I was sitting. So for background, I used to be on Mac, Probably five years ago, I sold my last Mac and it was the 2012 MacBook Pro, which was still a pretty good one, it had a lot of ports. So that one got to a point where I needed to upgrade it because it was getting too slow for work. So I looked into it and the upgrade was so expensive. And then I looked at some gaming laptop options and for the same hardware, it would be like a third of the price. For the same or less money, you could get a much better performing laptop. It was a much better deal at the time. However, now with the new M1 chip, there's a lot of things that change, like battery and uh, performance and everything. And I, I'm glad I came back. So my current gaming laptop is very fast. It has a Ryzen 9 5900HX CPU, which is very fast. It's got a RTX 3070 graphics card and then 64 gigs of RAM, which was like a massive increase, but it didn't do that much you know, regarding performance on video. And then we've got two hard drives in there, both SSD, NVMe SSD, so they're very fast, a one terabyte for the main drive and then a two terabyte for storage. So that's the one thing I wanna miss is, is the extra storage. The two terabyte extra built in was really nice. Um, but we've worked around that with like an external SSD, which is a safer way to do things anyway, because if the computer crashes and you have to send it in, your work's stuck on there. Whereas if you're working off of SSD, there's never that problem. If it breaks, take it out send it back to warranty for, for repair, and then when it comes back, plug it back in. So I have a double backup of work on external drives, and then I only keep like assets and like fonts and all kinds of software on the on the computer itself. The rest of it stays on the external. So the other reason I got the one terabyte storage is if I'm working on a job, say on the plane, I wanna be able to move that specific job to the internal hard drive, work on it while I'm away from my external. When I get back, then I'll just transfer it back. It's just always safer to work on the external so that if there's a problem, you can take it out. If you were wondering, this is the SSD external I'm using. It is a SanDisk Extreme portable SSD. This is a two terabyte. So from here on, I'm going to do pros and cons, more about the reason I like the MacBook and then explain what the problem was with the gaming laptop on that same subject. So the battery life on this thing is the reason I was watching a lot of YouTuber reviews. I was watching the announcements and stuff. The fact that it's saying you can get like 10 to 20 hours of battery life is it's actually pretty true depending on what you're doing. So compared to my gaming laptop that gets about two to three hours in general work stuff, emails, YouTube, so on. And then about an hour and 20 minutes of video editing the MacBook kills it. So the MacBook gets about six, seven hours of just video editing, non-stop exports, imports, grading, effects, everything. But six to seven hours, then it would hit 10% battery, I would plug it in for another hour, and then I would carry on like normal. It's been very impressive. If I had to just do work stuff and YouTube and Netflix, I'm sure this thing will go like 20 hours. The battery life's actually so good that you end up using the, the MacBook like a phone. So you're not like charging it to get to get work done. You're charging it because it's low. You go to bed, you charge it, or you, you get to 20% and then you charge it, or you know you're about to get on a flight or a road trip or something and you won't have a charger for another 15 hours, it's fine. You charge it once, you're probably gonna be good till you get to the hotel room. Performance, okay, this is another one. It's similar to battery because on a normal gaming laptop, if you don't plug it in, it is not fast. It is fastish. you could probably do video editing, Basic stuff, don't expect to do any grading, don't expect to do full previews, none of that. The gaming laptop gets a lot of its power from the power brick, which is why they're so big these days. And the hardware inside the laptop needs more power to be able to push it that hard. The battery can't push it that hard, it would break stuff. With a MacBook not being plugged in, you get the same performance as being plugged in, so I'm never plugged in. There's no 
the reason to do it. The reason I was always plugged in is because I'm sitting by my desk, I'm getting more performance, and because I'm sitting at my desk, I'm plugging the gaming laptop into the screen, and it's just a whole mess of stuff. The next thing is the video encoder. Basically, the M1 chip has its own encoder, I don't know if it's a chip or processor, but it, it helps figure out how to play the footage better. So things like GoPro footage, drone footage, even the A7S 3 footage, it struggles to play on my gaming laptop. If you push play, you're lucky if it starts playing. It would either hang, then play, or it would stutter, and then play. Now with this, I, it was so impressive. Even on the MacBook M1 Air, the one I tested before this, if you haven't seen that video, it is up. Even that would play the GoPro footage, no problem, push play, goes. Whereas I put the same project on both, I pushed play on, the, on my gaming laptop, it would not play the GoPro footage first time as you push play. Whereas this, I can go between Photoshop, um, the editing, emails come straight back to the editing of the video, push play and it plays. Okay, so the screen, the screen is really nice. Because it's 16 inch, you've got a little bit more like upwards real estate. It's, a, it's actually a weird shape to get used to, but when you start editing on it, you've got much more space for all the panels in your video editor, which is, which is great. The screen is 4K, I don't think it's HDR, but it's 4K, it's true tone, it's got all the color spaces, it, it's really good for editing. On top of that, the brightness of the screen can go very high. I keep it at about 50% because otherwise it starts hurting your eyes. Speakers, you guys don't get how good the speakers are. I, I try to play something, we'll see if it, if it does justice. It's so good to the point that I don't use headphones to edit these videos. I just edit it with the speakers coming out of here. If I had to do a client job, I might throw speakers on just to get the audio really perfect. But for most stuff, there's no headphones. I'm just using these speakers, even playing back YouTube videos or Netflix. Works like a bomb. If you had to go away for um, work and you're sitting in a hotel room and you want to get some music while you're cooking or something, this thing is the bomb. You won't even need to bring a speaker or anything with you. It's just very, very good. Let me play your song. So this is half, half volume. You'll hear there's like a, a good amount of bass on them, which is not a, usually a thing you get on, on laptop speakers. Listen to how full it sounds. It's like a full sound. Let's go. Half volume. That's full volume. So, the sound comes out from everywhere. There's two of these speakers over here, left and right. The side of the speakers over here have its own speakers coming out the back. It's just very nice. I mean, the speakers and the battery life alone would sell me on this. The speakers, the battery life, and that the fact that you get performance without plugging in, though, that alone would sell me on the device. So portability, this is about a similar thing to the battery life. I would like to get away from sitting at my desk a lot. So I often just sit at my desk, plugged into a monitor, and I edit all day. It's, it's kind of problematic because you don't want to just sit there all day every day. So with this, I can be a bit more portable. I can grab it, I can just take it. Don't even have to turn it off. Just go to sleep, take it, walk away, go to someone's house, edit there, walk to a coffee shop, edit there. I mean, even just simple things like going from from my editing place, like if I'm home alone, I sit there by the desk, I edit, but then Michelle will come home, we wanna watch like a series or like a movie. So walking to the lounge with the laptop, no plugged in cables, nothing, you just sit down, you can carry on working. It's, it's a great thing to be able to just know that, okay, I'm at 40% battery, but I've probably got a good two or three hours. I don't even need to charge, just go. That's, that's an awesome thing. Well, another thing, you guys don't know, but we live in South Africa. In South Africa, they have a thing called load shedding. Now load shedding, they just turn the power off for four hours. No more power for you. So we all actually own things like generators to generate our own power. And that's that's nice to have. But the fact that I can own the powers off for three hours, I could probably get all my work done. I just don't have internet. Things like that. Like not having power for four hours, this is not a problem. Normally I would be able to get two hours of work still done on my gaming laptop. And then I would have to wait two hours for the power to come back on. And then, you know, this I, I won't have that problem unless I forget to charge it and then the power goes off and then... I'm still gonna have to go to a coffee shop. And then things like power banks, the power bank can power this thing. You probably get a few more hours out of just one power bank. So 
even if I forgot to charge it, I could plug, I could charge it with a power bank, which my laptop can't do. Okay, we're gonna skip over number seven because that was charging with a power bank. I just spoke about that, but it's a it's a big plus for me. Number eight on my topic list here is the trackpad. The trackpad is much bigger. I'm not a big trackpad guy. On my gaming laptop, the trackpad is kind of used for when you forget your mouse. However, trying to be more portable, I want to see if I can just use this. And so far for two weeks, I've been editing using the trackpad. It's big enough that you can kind of move stuff around the whole screen. And then uh, using my Wacom tablet for photo editing. So I use this for photo editing plus the keys. And then for video editing, I use the trackpad plus the keys. And that's all I use. This thing is very quiet. So bunch of pros about that say I'm filming a video right now where I'm now using the laptop to talk to you I've got notes here there's no fan it's not a huge deal I come from a gaming laptop where it was noisy fans 100% all the time while you're doing work it's just nice that it's not on and I don't think I ever heard it turn on ever except during a video export once it was a very long video export I heard it and I actually had to a point I had to go what what's making that fan noise because I thought it was my other laptop and I had to put my ear real close to the keyboard to hear the fan so it's not like crazy fan noise but the fan did come on and it doesn't run very hot because I keep this on my lap often and on a pillow or whatever no problem don't know what they're doing in there but it's, it, they're doing a good job all right and then the last thing is ports ports is not a big deal for me because gaming laptops have tons of ports but it's nice that they're there and i know old macbook users have been moaning about no not having enough ports and they have to have dongles with them for everything and me not wanting to carry a mouse and more stuff i don't want to now have to carry dongles which defeats the purpose so having the ports in a new uh, m1 macbook was also another feature i saw in the video and i was like oh that makes my transition so much easier because now i don't have to give up ports to get the battery power. Mainly the, the only thing I've been always looking at was like, oh, the battery power. Look how good the battery power looks. Like I could work, no problem. And people would be like, oh, but you can just plug in. And I'm like, yes, sure. But it just makes life and editing so much easier. Just the battery power. Okay, and then if I really wanted to give you a con about it, is the built-in graphics card on my gaming laptop used to export way quicker. This is very nitpicky, mainly because if I had a 20 minute video for YouTube and I exported it on the MacBook, it would probably take 15, 12, 15 minutes. And then my gaming laptop would have done it in like five, 10 max. It would be exported because I think the graphics card helps it along a much better. That being said, it has to be plugged in for that to happen. Otherwise it would be much slower. And it's, you know, it's, it's probably the one con if I had to give you one con. Final thoughts, very chuffed with the laptop. Probably never gonna go back to gaming laptops. I want to build a home PC for gaming, so much smaller budget, but it's that's what it's there for. I'm gonna play games now, turn it on, play games. I also only play games at home, so having a gaming laptop doesn't really help because I'm not going places to game. I'm working with it when I'm away. So this is a work tool. Thanks for watching. If you wanna talk about the, the laptop, you wanna talk about my gaming one, if you wanna ask me how the transition was, do you wanna ask me any of that stuff, drop it in the comments below um, or on Instagram. Come on my Instagram, send me a message. I'm happy to chat to you guys if you've got valid questions. Drop me a comment, I'd love to do that. Follow me on Instagram if you do, I'll chat to you there as well. And then if you, are gonna buy one of these beautiful machines or the 14 or anything, please consider using the link down below. There's an affiliate link to Amazon. I get a little bit of a kickback if you buy the product. That helps me buy more stuff for me to review and try stuff for you. And please, if you are gonna buy one, consider using my link. Other than that, if you wanna try out some free software, you wanna buy the camera gear I use, you any of that stuff, all down there. Yeah, I hope this is not an hour because I gotta edit all of this. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Peace, love, happiness. Okay, bye. Even though it's only the MacBook, even though it's a <clears throat> I made notes. Never have notes, I made notes. Okay. Why don't I do this more often? M1 MacBook Pro? Please go to the down, please go down, to the down below. Uh, okay, that was way more, um, whatchamacallit, setting up than I wanted to do.